In this video, we will show you how you can easily build a scalable Hadoop native ETL pipeline using Cask Hydrator. Cask Hydrator is a native CDAP application built to provide data ingestion solutions for Hadoop. Hydrator provides an easy to use visual development environment for building ETL pipelines. Pipelines execute natively on Hadoop, utilizing the scale and power of Hadoop. A Hydrator pipeline consists of three types of plugins, sources, transformations, and syncs. Sources, transforms, and syncs use Hydrator Java APIs and can be easily extendable to your needs. We will demonstrate how you can use Hydrator to create a simple ETL pipeline that reads from a CSV file, parses the contents, applies a transformation, then writes to an HBase table and time partition parquet files. Let's get started. We start by clicking on Hydrator Pipeline to get into the Hydrator view. From here, we choose to create a batch pipeline. This is the Hydrator development view. Here, you can create a pipeline by dragging and dropping a source, transforms, and syncs from the left drawer. We are going to add a file source, a CSV parser, a script transform, and table and TPFS parquet syncs. Now let's start configuring and connecting the nodes in our pipeline. For the file source, we specify the path to a directory that contains files to be read. The file source will emit each record of the file in the body field. Each record read by file is passed to CSV parser. Now we configure the CSV parser. This tells CSV parser to parse the body field as CSV. This specifies how the body field should be parsed. The schema specifies all the fields that are part of the CSV record. Our file, we happen to know, contains an ID, first name, last name, email, address, city, state, and zip code. Now we connect the CSV parser to the script transform. We will configure a small transformation which will concatenate the last and first fields into a new name field. The script allows you to specify a transformation using JavaScript. Hydrator also supports using Python. We also want to delete the first field and the last field and add our new name field of type string. Now we want to write the output of the script transform to an HBase table and to time partitioned parquet files. We connect the script to the table and the TPFS parquet nodes. For the table node, we specify the name of the dataset to be demo underscore HBase and the key to be ID. The key is what will be used as the row key to the HBase table. For the TPFS parquet sync, we just specify a name of demo underscore HDFS. Now we provide a name and description for the pipeline. And finally, we can set a frequency for how often we want the pipeline to run. In this case, we'll have it run every day at midnight. Let's validate and make sure there are no issues. Everything looks good, so we can go ahead and publish the pipeline. Behind the scenes, publishing the pipeline will create an instance of a CDAP application. The application will contain a MapReduce job in a workflow that will process the pipeline. Now we navigate to Hydrator's pipeline operations view. From here, one can manage the lifecycle of the pipeline. You can schedule the pipeline, which will run it uh, at the schedule, which we've set to every day at midnight, or you can run it once. Let's run it once. While it's running, we can also see the other tabs that we have in this view. The datasets tab lets us look at the datasets associated with this pipeline. Clicking on one of these will allow you to interact with it. You can also look at the logs tab, which will give us logs of the run as it is going. We can also click on the metrics tab, 
which will give us some useful metrics to see the number of input records and output records from each stage. This is how you can create and run a pipeline within Hydrator. Thanks for watching this introductory video.